I can't show you. So the thing is like I'm a metal black weather, but I can't show his face right now because it's going through a lot here in Malaysia. It's like he's been here for so long and it's so difficult for him like, to find a job. So I don't want to put him in any trouble and I'm um, trying to get him some food because he hasn't eaten any food yet. I'm not an angel, I'm not your saviour. I'm a man that made mistakes, constantly evolving, constantly learning. I tell you what, making an episode like this is painfully difficult because we know in this day and age, people tend to cancel you. If you say something that doesn't align to the vast majority, your life is over. People attack you, they shake you, they break you, and some will even try to attack you online. Because weak people attack people online, saying all kind of dangerous stuff, threatening to kill, threatening to break you. Do you know, as a filmmaker who travelled to places, travelling extensively and exposing to different culture, I can be that foreigner who go to a place and only stating the good side. And we all know people online only want to see something happy, joyful. Don't talk about the bad, only the good. To be a traveller is one thing, and to be a traveller that state the fact is another. So, as a foreigner in this place, and I don't want to make this thing about race, Malaysia is a very tolerant place, encouraging people from all walks of life, come, work, go, leave, enjoy, and tell the story. My story, this time around, is different. You see, what you don't see behind the scene, there are layers of problem for in the face particularly Africans. Do you know, look at me, I'm a black man that travel places and behind me there are some things people might say, yeah, look at that guy, gross bag, he must be a drug dealer, how can he afford to travel? Fun fact is, whenever I travel to a place where the vast majority ain't my race, you know, on the outside they think I'm from Nigeria. But coming closer, when I speak, show my passport, and the treatment change instantaneously. They treat you better. And it has happened to me, not just in Malaysia, but across different places. Being a foreigner in Malaysia, most likely you're accustomed to the good things. Things you and I love. The food, the friendly people, at times. And of course, moving around this place can be a joy. You know, Malaysia is constantly evolving. And for generation, people from all walks of life come to this place seeking a better life. You know, students from various parts of the world. You know, in Malaysia, the healthcare, the education system is flawless. You see, a guy like Toby, which is not his real name, came to Malaysia age 27, now 37. No job, no future, left Nigeria seeking a better education, which he has. Now this is quite scary and it's something very important and I have to be honest, I'm going to tell the story. I'm not going to pull my, this brother into any trouble and if you see any blur, basically, I'm trying to protect him, his identity, so. You see, discrimination happens in so many ways. If you are Malay, they will say you are lazy. And if you're Chinese, they say you're so desperate and eager for money. If you're Indian, they might say, guess what? You guys like curry and you smell. It's all bad, you know? And in this country and all around the world, the way they perceive people of color, it's not really pretty. And discrimination comes in so many forms. And it's mad. Well, let's talk about it. Racism is more of hang. I don't like racism, and whenever I see one or experience one, it makes me feel like breaking a glass. But I shouldn't, because. And that's exactly what people want me to do and I should be collective and stay calm and 
a plan. Oh, say, Sly Malaysia, it surely is a mixture of great things, right? But then again, when you look at things on a deeper side, there's a lot of loopholes and flaws and things that I'll say it doesn't make no sense to me. And well, especially when I see a lot of the young boys or kids, right? Basically, they are constantly out, whether it be in a shopping mall or walking around, like getting food. They're like, they're not even in school. It's really, it's really sad when I look at things in that way. I was like, come on, aren't these guys or these boys or these ladies or these little kids, right? Why they're not in school? Today's Wednesday and, uh, and I saw quite a lot of them. And I, I really need someone to explain that to me. And also explain why most of the people that does all the hard labor right here in Malaysia, they're either from uh, Bangladesh in uh, you know, origin or Pakistan or Indian or whatsoever. Please someone tell me, right? I think there's a lot of um, lack of opportunity for people from those regions, right? Because I those people from the region, let's face it, they're coming from a very weak economy, right? And also, let's say, in a more broader and clear note, yeah, the country is not well off, it's not rich compared to Malaysia. Malaysia is a very rich place and um, you see like companies and brands are, are dying to come into this market because um, there's a lot of them, um, you know what I mean, opportunity of growth and causing, making more profit and money and all that, right? But when you look deep, of course, and there's, there's so many things that I don't really like about it, especially when it comes to like mistreatment of foreigners, right? Excuse me. Sorry, just want to ask for direction, quick. Are you going to be like that? Wow. This is the problem here, you know? Like, the women are insane, especially the Chinese looking one. So basically, the way they perceive um, black men. I even said politely as well, right? So I just want to prove a point. You know, because I don't like to make things up, right? It's shocking. You know, it's really, really shocking, right? Does it pin me? Does it piss me off? Absolutely. You understand? So, but this is the thing here. It happens all the time. You know, like when a guy trying to have to, unless you just want to talk to someone, right? Basically, by the way they perceive you, it's yeah. like you're scary, it's like you're a drug dealer. And, uh, yeah. Listen, I'm not a journalist, I'm not a reporter, I'm just a filmmaker who create things on YouTube for my channel, my travel, my story. So that's the brother there, and then that's all I can show you, I don't want to disclose his identity. Oh man, it's really sad man, what's happening here, I love Malaysia, but this is quite scary and it's something very important and I have to be honest. I'm going to tell the story. I'm not going to pull my this brother into any trouble. Right. Being unbiased is key. You see, a guy like Toby could be telling me all kind of story for me to feel sorry for him. But let's face it, racism in Malaysia still exists. Do you know? In this place, if you're a black man walking down the street, most people might be reluctant to come up and say hi to you. Why? Well, because in the past, Nigerians who came to this place. They did unlawful stuff, criminal stuff like scam. Do you remember the notorious hush puppy? Well, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia was his base. Do you know, there's so many Nigerians who have tarnished the reputation of black people. They came to this place, they lost the trust of the Malaysian. So when Malaysians see a black person, instantaneously, they are afraid to interact because in their head, they may think you're trying to scam them. Do you know, in here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, or Cross, and other places have been, you know, stopping a Chinese Malay for direction, it can be tricky. Just want to ask for direction, quick. Are you going to be like that? Wow. To be more practical, and I don't like to speculate, and that's the most important thing about me, right? And that's the way it is. And I'm very polite when I approach any woman, and that is, that is in my DNA. Being polite, is the way to go right i have to go and catch the monorail anyway so definitely i think i'm the thing here and i don't want to make malaysia look bad surely that is not my main motive i like to like just to tell you that i don't like to make things up i don't make things up at all but this is true and i did that purposely i have my interest on that girl absolutely not 
definitely. And of course, she surely don't have any interest. She surely doesn't have any interest over me as well. So that's fine. It, it's okay that way. But there will be guys I met here. I fell over a black guy. It's like they can't even bother again to date. Uh, you know, let's face it, an Asian woman because um, because they'll just feel like they were so scared away. They don't even want to talk to the pretender. See if they're on the phone. So you, you, are, you are walking by the right. Yeah. So when they see you, Africa, they will quickly go turn. You know, they are going their way, they are going your way. Right. But when so they see Africa, Africa they will just turn around quick. They will go turn around. <laughs> Bro, you are inside the car. They, when they are inside their car, they reduce glass to see whether it's Africa. I shot you. They will just surprise. I so I'll, I'll see if you don't have money. Ah, bro, it's very terrible. This people, they treat us very bad, like criminals. Oh my God! As long as you are black. I've never, I've never but asked in KL, you. inside KL, yeah. you don't have no problem with any police. Okay. But for outside, outside, ah, it's bad. And it's very bad. For KL, yeah, you don't have no problem. But outside, hey, that Puchon area, bro, it's, it's terrible. Because they have got uh, many Africa, but most of them they are not Nigeria. Oh, Kuton area? Yeah, there are there's that? a lot of Kuton. That is my area. It's very far. Oh, okay. There, there's a lot of Nigeria, uh, Kenya, okay. Somalia. Most of them are students. Okay. Because there's a uh, MME, Mass University, UIM, all in that area. So there's many Africa. Okay. But they harass people a lot. There. So when you mean arrest, like what sort of arrest? They've really been stopped in search? Or the is that like a police you, raid or something like that? No, the one they see do stop you, yeah. your paper, show. Can I go search your home? For what? So wait, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, they will stop you and then they want to see where... Whether you're in the wrong place or you're right place, they don't care. As long as you're black, they see for all those stop you. Oh my God. I swear to God. They ask you paper, you give where your hope, you tell, can I go? So when you, when, if you are white enough, you talk to them, why you don't go my home, for what reason? Then they will start, they will be scared, because most of them, they don't understand English also. They are working for police, but they don't understand English. Okay. Yeah. Only few of them can understand English. Right. But the rest, they talk one, 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 they don't understand. Oh man. I think only this year I feel like this year they make it mandatory for from uh, Nazri to start teaching English mandatory. Yeah? Okay. But before it's not, it was not only Mali. That's why they don't understand English. Right, right. Because they only teach them Mali. So when you when you do not communicate with uh, someone who understands English, how can you understand it? Okay. And you are working for your country. Why you know there's a lot of foreigners. Right. Most of the income is from foreigners. Right, right. Most of the country's country income is from foreigners. Oh, foreigners they, yeah? don't, they don't respect foreigners. Yeah, when it comes to tourism, when it comes to like they students don't, coming they don't, in. They don't respect us at all. That's mad. They they see the teachers like criminals. Oh my god. I've never had anything like this before about this country. You know, when you meet the right people and then you start to know, it makes you feel so sad. And, and they want to what about them, they don't go to school, they don't care about school. Really? All these people, they are very young, many of them. They're supposed to be in school. But they're working, they don't care about school here. Because here, as long as you are local, whether you go to school or you don't go to school, you can get with more. They don't have problem. So that's why school is not priority for them. So that means like I think end that's why for them just to get money, buy good phone, it's, it's easy. Buy clothes. That's the only thing they worry about. Right. Oh man. You see, with small small girls they are working. Why are they supposed to be in school? You see, one thing I've learned in Asia, you as a foreigner, not just being black, white, or brown or whatsoever. If you come here, you're a foreigner, chances are it will be difficult for you to find a job. Except if you're an expat in some satin field, whether it be a nursing 
or you're a doctor or you're a technician or you work in IT or whatever, chances are you might find a job. And most of the jobs that come around here easily for foreigners is teaching English. Listening to Toby's story surely break my heart. He's been here in Malaysia since he was 27. He came as a student and now 37 graduated with degree and in fact masters. He said he's been applying for job but he's been torn away on numerous times. And when I asked about housing, he said he lived in the outskirts of Kuala Lumpur. Basically, in Malaysia, most landlords are reluctant to rent to Africans because of previous bad tenants who refused to pay on time. And in the past, some landlords said no Africans allowed, which causes rage and anger across the nation. You know, I've met people from all walks of life. I'm a social creature, and I interact with people from all cultural background. You know I love Malaysia, I love Asia, but their preference. You know in Asia, they prefer Caucasian. You know I'm not mad, everyone have a preference. If that what they're like, good. For me, I'm cool, I'm being me. Do you know, my experience in this place has been a life-changing experience. Surely Malaysia has changed me in some kind of way, opened my eyes to a new possibility. Malaysia is a diverse place, and here the majority are Chinese, Malay and Indians. Do you know, I will always come to this place. Now every time I come, I try my best to interact with people, the locals, and trying to learn one or two things. Do you know, no country is perfect. Racism and discrimination can be prevalent in most society. But the more we interact, the more we evolve, the more we change our perspective, change our narrative. Do you know, in conclusion, based on my experience, based on my sincere observation, those who sweep the streets, housekeeper, truck drivers, traders, sellers. You see, all these people came here seeking a better life. And for some foreigners, life here in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia can be a nightmare. To wrap you up, I love Malaysia. Surely I will keep coming. But of course, there's some changes need to be made. I think maybe this will come down to interaction. Do you know, some foreigners will come to this place making videos about Malaysia, but I will stay far away from this kind of topic because it's scared. But for me, I'm just stating the fact. It's good to be balanced, to say the good and the bad. So please let me know what your experience has been here in Malaysia. Good or bad, please share. Be nice, be respectful.